They'll love it when your neighbor gets a batch of corn to make cream corn and they bring you the cobs because the chickens just get so excited. You girls want some? Yum yum. Oh, come on, you guys are usually way more excited. <laughs> Talk about fast growth. I just looked at these and didn't see any fruit development. And now we have a baby. It's not very big, but it's very cute. Same thing over here. I was just looking at these and boom, we have a vining okra starting. So, I am very excited to see how this does. There are so many flowers on these cherry tomatoes. And they're setting fruit already. Very excited to have another round of cherry tomatoes from these five plants. The mother plant is still producing lots of fruit is developing lots of flowers still being set but as you can see towards the bottom the leaves are becoming blight and there's just way too much to clean up in the center of those plants for me to invest in the time it would take for me to clean them up so these are now going to be considered sacrificial if they survive and produce fruit then so be it, and if they don't, then they don't, because we have a second succession that we planted right over there. The Cherokee purple are also setting fruit again, setting flowers again. So this is gonna be our second round of fruit production on this plant as well, and I am so excited. I'm totally here for it. This strange little Roma has decided that it's not going to be determinate and it's continuing to set fruit and bloom. What a weirdo. But I may or may not leave these because I might need to use this space for other stuff. The big boy are setting another set of fruit. So is the early girl. You can see there's fruit all in there. And the better boy is better boy and big boy whichever these ones are what we thought were Rutgers but they seemed like they were a little different and some of them are doing okay they're not doing great as a plant overall but they are still doing something and then these are our mystery from the Asian store some are doing great and some not so much so we may sacrifice a few of these tomato beds for our fall plantings but for now I'm gonna let them stay a little bit longer to see how they do I'm definitely gonna be keeping the ones that are producing great like the Cherokee purple and the cherries so we have some other tomatoes that we planted as a second succession these were from the 150 tomato plants that we got so they're all different ones Ryan picked out some that he thought would be fun to do a comparison on how well they do up here in the raised beds compared to how they do down there. So we got Long Tall Sally, Pink Perkly Dye Dye, Sarah Black, Solar Flare, and what's this puny little guy? Oxheart. So this one seems to be struggling, but I fertilized, I'm keeping them trimmed. Anytime I see any yellowing, or spotted leaves pruning them off the squash vine borer luckily did not kill my lemon squash this is why I grow this variety these plants have had squash vine borers they are not immune to it they are just very good at recovering from it so ideally what I would do is cover all of this down with compost so that adventitious roots could grow down into the soil to provide even more support for a continued harvest all the way to frost. 
these delicious Asian cucumbers. I have saved this one. You can see it's gigantic. I'm saving it for seed. Don't know its name. I don't know its variety, but they have been absolutely delicious and prolific. This is what a ripe one looks like. Growing right into the tomato cage. Let me pull you. They have a very white end. Oh, fire it biting my finger. They have a very white tapered end and they are very crisp and delicious and really good for, for just fresh eating. I have shared these with a couple of different people and they have all raved about them. My mom absolutely loved eating them. Um, my neighbor and her friend, who's a neighbor on the other side of her, have both loved them as well. So I've been sharing them. They produce a couple of fruit every week. So for only having four plants and getting two fruit, two to four fruit a week, I, that's pretty good. Miss Celsi got back from her vacation last night and she was over here this morning bringing me corn husks for the animals and corn cobs for the chickens. And we talked about the gardens a little bit and about how difficult of a time I've had down there in her gardens. And what she reiterated to me that is extremely important with growing down there is fertilizing. So I have been blessed, maybe spoiled, with the fact that I have always raised gardens in compost. I've always bought in a truckload of compost whenever I start a new garden somewhere. It's the first thing I do. If I don't already have the compost built up for myself, I buy compost, organic compost. And I always have grown in very organic rich soil. The soil down there has no organic matter and it is depleted of all nutrition from years and years of agriculture use. So she relies on a chemical fertilizer. She uses a 10, 10, 10 and she has great success with growing lots of beautiful vegetables. And I'm not completely opposed to a chemical fertilizer. There are some benefits to it. I do try to stay organic. Um, I don't want to use a chemical fertilizer and I will continue to find ways to organically improve my soil so that I can succeed and do better. The beds down there are not something that I'm going to go dump a truckload of compost in. They're, it's not my property. It's not my beds. So what I hope I can do next year and maybe even this fall with a fall garden down there is using a whole lot more organic fertilizer than I've ever used before. I've been spoiled. I have not used anything except for like a little bit of tomato tone or garden tone in the past on occasion. Like I use the tomato tone every year on my tomatoes to make sure I get a good tomato production. But as far as everything else goes, I've never had to fertilize like this. So it's, it is kind of a new experience for me, even though I have been educated in fertilizer and the uses of fertilizer and how to detect if something needs fertilizer, all that jazz, I've never actually had to apply it in my own home garden. So this is a great learning experience for me and I'd love to take you guys along with the journey of discovering ways to improve dead soil and make it come back to life again without using compost. It's a bigger challenge than I had previously thought. Well, the weight of the fruit finally pulled it down so that it was touching the ground after this rain we got. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this one. I'm assuming it's big enough. <laughs> you think? 